What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Aviator Chris channel. Today is the first video in the SimPit Deep Dive series. We're going to be taking a look at the real SimGear TBM panel. Stick around. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that none of the products that you see here uh, were sponsored. I bought them with my own money and these opinions are my own. All right, everyone, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, we're going to take a look at the overview of the panel, all the functions and features that it has. Um, compatibility with multiple aircraft. It is the TBM panel, but it is uh, compatible with other things as well. I've used it in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've used it in X-Plane. I've used it with the new Airfoil Labs 172NG. I've used it with the Cirrus. Um, use it with multiple planes. Pretty much anything that's a G1000, it does work. There's some minor limitations here and there, um, but nothing too crazy. And by minor limitations, I mean just by the TBM specific buttons. Uh, switches and knobs, they're specific to the TBM, so they're obviously not going to work in other aircraft. So just talking right out of the gate on quality, it is 10 out of 10 for me. Um, the custom Slavics panel, which was custom made uh, for real sim gear for all their components to be installed, absolute top tier, uh, super high quality, everything is all metal. Um, obviously some of the bezels and things like that are, are plastic, but everything is constructed with, the, with top tier quality here. Um, button feedback, I honestly, I think it's actually better than the real thing because I have used some G1000s in the real world where some of the times the buttons just weren't responsive and the comm knobs, uh, nav knobs were not as responsive as I'd like them to be where everything just works just absolutely perfect here on this panel. So one of the things to note is I'm not a TBM pilot. I'm not qualified to fly the TBM, but I absolutely love the aircraft. Now, when I was thinking about picking up a panel for my own flight training, I was weighing the options of, hey, do I just get a generic G1000 setup or do I go for the TBM panel? I love flying the TBM, but if I was going to have a G1000 setup, I'd be a little bit limited on some of those knobs and switches that are specific to the TBM, so I really wouldn't be able to fully utilize that aircraft with the panel. So I said to myself, hey, let's go with the TBM panel because at least with going with a TBM panel, I'm going to have all the specifics for the TBM and then for everything else, it will pretty much get filled in by, you know, generic switch panels and things like that that I have. Um, so that was pretty much the reason why I went with choosing the TBM panel overall. This panel pretty much covers 99% of the things that you would need to do with the TBM 900 by Hot Start and X-Plane 11. Now, the only thing that I just can't see how you would do is uh, be able to reset circuit breakers and things like that. Um, that is typically with the in-game uh, in VC. I don't know of any way to do that externally. Obviously, this panel doesn't support it. I don't know of any panel that supports it. Um, that would be a little bit over the top, I guess, um, unless you were really going for a full-blown TBM replica, uh, which I wasn't going to do. It was mainly going to be uh, able to fly the TBM 900 without any issues and be able to use it with G1000 on every other aircraft. So now with that said, you have the full icing panel uh, for the TBM. You have the full lighting panel for the TBM. Uh, even included, which actually surprised me, which I wasn't sure about, uh, is the start switch is, is spring-loaded, from what I understand, on the real aircraft, and they replicated that here. So it's kind of cool to, to, you know, hit that start switch, hold the two seconds and release, and it comes back uh, on its own. You don't have to just toggle it up and toggle it back down. Uh, they did a really good job with that. The master warning and master caution buttons all work. Uh, they illuminate. Uh, they do uh, everything that they're supposed to do, which is great, because especially on shutdown, the TBM likes to chime pretty much every single warning as the, the engine's spooling down, so it's great for resetting those, and obviously anything in flight if something were to come up. We also have the full landing gear and pressurization panel. We also have the full keypad um, for entering in-flight plans, which is fantastic. I, I actually wish I had that in the 172 um, instead of having to spin the knob and, you know, just have to enter and everything manually. It just seems to take forever where, you know, you could just a couple of key presses and boom, your, your flight plan is, uh, is entered in. Audio panel also works as intended. Um, reversionary mode works as intended. You can uh, switch between radios real easy and go through all the real world procedures of how, you know, you might want it to ensure both your comm radios work. You might be, you know, talking to ground on comm one and then quickly switch over to talk to tower on comm two. So that way you know that 100% uh, before you left the ground that both your comm radios are operational. So what's also cool is since the G1000 is the replica of the G1000 with the autopilot built in, if you are flying in a 172 that has that particular autopilot, you can get familiar with using that one right in the 172. If you're in the TBM, it's got the replica of the GFC 500, uh, which is, I believe, the same exact one that's in the TBM. If not, it's very close to it. 
All right, so that's uh, all about the hardware. Let's talk about the software a little bit. Uh, we'll start with X-Plane 11 first. X-Plane 11 uses the typical uh, X-Plane 11 plugin system. You load into your flight, it detects all the gear, and everything with the TBM is pretty much working right out of the box. Uh, even so with other aircraft that I've tried, the Cirrus uh, and the Airfoil Labs 172NG, uh, the Phenom Jet, um, all the G1000 related things in, in all the planes work right out of the box, and obviously, Everything works right out of the box with the TBM from the keypad to displaying charts. Um, there's literally been zero issues. It's plug and play. Um, there's no manual configuration per se. Uh, the only thing you have to do, and this is unique to everyone's setup, is determine where the actual displays here, um, what monitor, so to speak, that they display on. It's super easy. Um, just a couple of config file edits and a little bit of trial and error, and you're pretty much up and running. All the instructions are right there on their website. Uh, super easy to get going, very user-friendly. So just to touch on the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 software, it's an executable that runs outside. Um, the Real Sim Gear installer, you know, has it auto start with the Sim through the exe XML file, I believe it is. Um, you know, and again, it's the same thing, straightforward. The Sim boots up, it detects all the Real Sim Gear stuff. Uh, you load into your flight and everything pretty much just works out of the box. There's no, you know, having to assign things or any of that stuff. Everything is just uh, ready to go. So one thing to note is the TBM 930 is not entirely compatible with this panel. Can't really expect it to be. The TBM 930 runs the G3000. This is a G1000. The G3000 is touchscreen with the touch keypads on the lower console there. Um, so again, it, it's not really compatible. You can pop out the screens and display them like you could with, with anything else that pops out. Um, However, you know, a lot of the switches and things don't work. The icing panel, I, doesn't, I don't believe, works, and the start switch. And these are all limitations from what I understand in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I, I'm assuming either the API or the Sim Connect API. I'm not really sure how uh, the real Sim Gear software is talking with the Sim. Um, but aside from the TBM 930, um, the longitude, anything that's not a G1000, you can't really expect to work because most of that stuff is touchscreen. Um, but anything G1000 within the sim, from the Baron to the Bonanza, um, the aftermarket Kodiak, the obviously the Cessna 172 G1000, all those work right out of the box, um, which obviously without the exception of the, uh, the TBM specific switches. So just to talk about any issues I've had, I really haven't had anything. Everything has been rock solid. Um, the only two issues that I've had, one was my fault, one was Microsoft's. Um, Microsoft released Sim Update, I think it was 8 or 9, and that caused a crash to desktop compatibility issue with the Real Sim Gear software. Real Sim, uh, Real Sim Gear team, support team was great. They put out an update right away, and the problem was fixed. So the only other issues I had, which was just a me issue, is where my PC is located in relation to the Sim Pit. I have to run a wiring harness to extend the monitors and the USB over. Eventually, I'll invest in a Real Sim Pit PC, and we won't have this issue. Um, but again, the issue is essentially gone. I invested in a quality uh, USB 3.1 extension cable and all my issues went away. And the only issues I was really having is, you know, intermittently USB devices would disconnect. So you'll be sitting there trying to fly and go tune something on the autopilot and it's all of a sudden not working. But I replaced and upgraded to a proper USB 3.1 cable, I believe it is. I'll put the link in the description. And all those issues went away. All right, so that pretty much does it here for the real Sim Gear TBM panel deep dive. Um, I would, you know, my closeout thoughts: ten out of ten. It, it, it's superb quality. Um, I think it's worth every penny. Uh, the software is great. Everything is plug and play. Um, the quality of the hardware is fantastic. The build quality overall, everything is just fantastic. A lot of people ask me, you know, how do you justify the cost? You know, it, it's expensive. For me, I don't get to fly as much as I would like in real life. Um, so this essentially is a way to stay sharp. Uh, you know, I'm going for my instrument rating and being able to go through all the menus on the G1000s without even thinking about it and keeping that muscle memory. You know, that's, that's, that's the primary purpose of what this was all about. All the fun that comes with it, that, you know, that's just an added bonus. Um, but it was mainly, it was, it's a memory, uh, aid and, and a learning tool and being able to fly proper procedures and, and do things on pilot edge and VATSIM. It's just absolutely fantastic. All right, everyone, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you feel there's something I, I missed or didn't cover, you know, let me know in the comments below. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for future videos because uh, we're going to be doing more in this series uh, covering the construction, uh, the yoke, 
um, miscellaneous panels and some of the other software that basically ties this whole kit together and, and, and makes it a super enjoyable uh, simming experience. So uh, be well and fly safe.